I think that the wisdom here, and probably the reason I'm here tonight, is that uh, what Martin and the Foundation and those who uh, have been traveling long way with him here in this country was taking this approach into the areas that seemed to them most important in this country. So, Ishar Koach, it's very good that we have this book in Hebrew right now, but no less important that we see that there is a lot of enthusiasm in continuing different programs that the Mandel Foundation has been running, and I wish you a lot of success. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, it's been a real pleasure to read your book, and are you ready for some conversation? I'm ready. So, <laughs> I wanted to ask you if there is a moment that you actually feel that you are living the American dream. Do you say to yourself, you know, oh my God, that dream they're talking about, that you can come from poverty, invest $900 in a business, 36 years later, sell it for $3 billion, invest hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in good philanthropy. This is me, do you say that to yourself? Yes. <laughs> when was the first time you said to yourself, yes, this is me? Well, you're asking a serious question, so I should give you a serious answer. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure there was a first time. It, it just happens. Uh, one of the things that uh, was uh, instrumental and whoever it is I am and my brothers and I had a sister uh, became is luck. We were born in a house to parents whose values were the best of I'm going to say Western civilization but uh, just the basics. <clears throat> and I've told this to some of you I never can recall hearing my mother lecture about being a good person and so on and so forth. It was how she lived her life. It was how she defined herself. Uh, and I never knew it. Uh, it's getting to be a long answer. For years, we grew up in a wonderful home. We were in a low economic strata, but we weren't poor. We never, the word poor never was in our vocabulary. But we knew we didn't have any money. My mother Rose Mandel was the go-to person on our street. And I'm going to say six or eight times a year. It doesn't sound like a lot, but over time it's a lot. People would come to her and say, Mrs. Mandel, <clears throat> my daughter's getting married. This is during the Great Depression in the, 30s, in the 30s. So the numbers I'm going to give you sound low, but they weren't low then. Mrs. Mandel, my daughter's getting married. I need to buy a new dress. Could you loan me $20? And what my mother said every time, uh, at the time I, I took it in, but I, I, I wasn't as conscious of it as I was many years later. What my mother said every time was, no, Mrs. Gashmarnowitz, take it. You'll find a way to pay me back. And so, and if this, this is when you didn't have money to pay no the money, rent? No or money, no and money. And did it ever occur to you when you heard her saying, Mom, what are you doing? I mean, we don't have no, money for school or for... We never said that, but I'll tell you what I figured out. I finally figured out where did my mother get this money. She didn't buy herself a new pair of shoes. She didn't buy herself a new dress. Uh, and those lessons were so deeply inculcated in us that we started, I'm going to use the word generous, we started being generous. When we just had enough money to pay our bills and we had a few dollars in the bank, 
not when we were more or less wealthy. Uh, <clears throat> I was 26, 27 years old, and, and, and my brothers and I were giving money away. Not much, but giving money away. So I've had all these forces at work for years, and it turns out I'm fulfilling my dream by sharing our wealth with others in an effort to turn out, well, you can see there, well, not that slide, but uh, essentially what the Mandel Foundation does. You know that, because many of you are graduates. Essentially, what we do is invest in people that we think can change the world for the better. That's the way we are changing the world. And you know what? It's been a tremendous success, if I have to say so myself. So thank you, all of you. How far down the, your journey did your mother get to see? My mother, <clears throat> I'm glad to say, got to see us when we were rich. What is rich? Uh, we. Uh, I'll, use, I'll use a number, which is not a real number. We had maybe $20,000 in a bank, a family that couldn't pay the rent. My brothers and I were rolling in wealth to us. When you have no bills and you have cash in the bank, I mean, how do you define wealth? Uh, and we started our foundation, if you can believe it, our business was very small, becoming more successful. We started our foundation in 1953. Uh, I'd been 13 in 13 years after you started your business, only 13 years. 13 ago. years, and, and, uh, and we had World War II, and I was in World War II, and that kind of interrupted our, inter interrupted our business. Because we had this extra money, and we knew, we just knew, it was just in our bones. We knew what we should do with it, so we started being, you know, I'm going to say philanthropist. But I want to tell you, you make it sound so easy, okay? So you say all you need is ace-class players, create a great working environment, treat people with respect, execute well, serve your customers. Now, if you look around, it's far from simple because most of us are reading books about it, not writing the books about it. So what's the secret? Because it's not simple at all. I'm not sure I can answer that question, really. <clears throat> Uh, I will say, one of the things that was in that slide film, execution, superior execution, is very noticeable. Uh, that is, when you go into a restaurant, or you go into a store, or you go into a doctor's office, or wherever you go, uh, most of the time it's okay. But you're not dazzled to say, oh my God, they treated me so wonderfully. My, my brothers and I each ended up being a billionaire, not because we were so smart, but because we pushed the lever that impressed our companies the most, our customers the most. And in our business, in the industry we were in, it was superior service. It was their knowing, there's some examples in my book, it was their knowing because we sold replacement parts, parts to fix up equipment. If their machine broke down on a weekend, if their plant's production line stopped, we would, quote, kill ourselves for them. And we did. And there are many examples, a few, a few of them are in my book. And we got this reputation. If you want to depend on someone, depend on Mandel. And that made, I would say that's uh, partly as our looks, but... Uh, <laughs> That made us, that deep commitment to how do, we, how do we convince customers you can depend on us, we'll always be there for you, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and we were. But I wanted to touch before, before we go, before I uh, conclude, about lighting a candle, which is your way of talking about your, of your philanthropy work. And you, and you make a point of saying that the most important thing for you is leading a meaningful life. What does it mean for everyone? What should we take from that phrase, leading a meaningful life? Yeah. Well, that's quite a question. So let me uh, approach it uh, maybe from more than one direction. Because I think this is probably the most important thing I'm going to share with you. It doesn't have to be right, but it's how I feel. So I've come to redefine success in the last X years. Probably the last... 10 or 15. I'm 92. So I was pretty old before I, I kind of got this. <clears throat> so I'll give you in shorthand. 
I define success as looking in the mirror and seeing someone that looks like you, that you know is you, and you're proud to be that person. You know everything about that person. You know all the secrets about that person's life. You know the things that person has done, the things that person hasn't done, why he or she has done what they've done. So I'm making this quite a story. But I think we're all on a journey, and I think success is when you get to a certain age and you look back on that life and say, I'm proud of that life. I would do that life over again. Maybe there were some little things you wouldn't, but uh, it's not how much money is in it. I've got a lot of money in the bank. Uh, you know, I can do anything I want financially. I thought, my God, whoa, isn't that, isn't that heaven? It's not heaven. It ain't bad, as they say. <laughs> but what's success? So, success is nearing the end of your journey and feeling uh, good about who you are and what kind of son you've been, what kind of partner you've been, what kind of parent you've been, what kind of employer you've been, what you've done with your life, what you've done with your wealth. I like what I've done with my life and I like what we're doing with our wealth. That's success to me. Uh, is that... Is that uh, So, let me share with you one of uh, the most uh, interesting uh, sentences I found in the book, and I can pick up from your, your sentence, and, and he more writes it, Mr. Mandel writes in his book, I do not intend to retire, so many more candles to light, the torch is in my hand, I intend to hold it as high as I can for as long as I can. So thank you so much for this conversation. And I think on behalf of all, this is a great conversation.